What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Rice Kill Eat Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me constantly, and I, I definitely appreciate that. I definitely appreciate the constant support that you guys are giving, the loyal support that you guys are continuing to show up and, and listen to the Rice Kill Eat Podcast. I can definitely appreciate that. My name is Tyler Pruitt. I am the host, and I am the founder of the Rice Kill Eat Podcast, where it is my goal to share the ideas, the conversations, the stories around the people that that love God, freedom, and the great outdoors. That's what our mission is, and that's what my mission is for the Rice Kelly Podcast, is to is to be a voice for people who love those three things and who, who prioritize those three things in our life. So I definitely hope you guys are enjoying the show, and I certainly appreciate all the continued support that continues to come from it. Now, today's episode is a monologue episode. I haven't done one of these in a long time. It's been quite a while since the last time I did a monologue episode. Um, I think it's been since probably May, because we've really been hitting the interview episodes pretty hard here lately. If you guys have missed out on any of the episodes that have come out over the past summer, or the past, really, I guess, what, about four months or so, then go back and check some of those out. I mean, it's been pretty incredible. Some of the people that I've been able to talk to, Guys like Bud Fisher, Travis T-Bone Turner. Um, I mean, just the list, it just goes on and on. Guys that from all, literally all across the country and all across the world. And it's been it's been my pleasure to be able to, to share those conversations with you guys. And the cool part about it is that we all have the same kind of passion. We're all passionate about the outdoors. We're all passionate about getting outside and pursuing God's creation, whether it be through hunting, whether it be through fishing, um, just hiking, camping, whatever it is, we all have the same passion for wanting to get out and experience the creator through his creation. And then, of course, we have the passion of our faith, and our faith in God and our faith in our relationship in Christ. So it's been an, an absolute pleasure to be able to share those conversations with you guys. So be sure to go back and check some of those episodes out. But like I said, today is a monologue episode, so I call it monologue, it's a solo episode, whatever you want to call it, but basically where I just kind of go through and I just share something that's on my heart, share something that's on my mind. And today's topic, I really had a whole bunch of them that I've been throwing around here lately. I actually recorded one and then wasn't really too happy with how it turned out or not necessarily, I guess not happy isn't, isn't a good way to put it, but I just felt like it wasn't time to share that one yet. So I'm going to record another one, which is, of course, what I'm doing right now. So to be able to share with you guys. And um, today I wanted to talk about what it means to be salt and light in today's world. All right. So this is something that that Jesus talks about in his Sermon on the Mount. So the Sermon on the Mount, for those guys that aren't familiar, is probably one of the most famous sermons that has, has ever been taught. And it was, of course, done just under 2,000 years ago when Jesus actually preached this sermon. He, he taught this sermon. And still to this day, it's still one of the most famous sermons by, of course, one of the best teachers to ever do it. But more specifically, this passage, it comes down, it comes from Matthew chapter 5. So Matthew, the very first book in the New Testament. Matthew chapter 5, and this is from verses 13 through 16. All right, so there's just a few short verses here, but they really pack a heavy punch on what it means to be to be salt and light in today's world, really at, in any world. Because this, like I said, this was written just under 2,000 years ago, so what was taught then still applies to this day. And, of course, Christ knew that when he was teaching it. So let me just kind of quickly read this, read this passage for you guys, and then we'll dive into to each of these verses. That's really what I want to do is just kind of break down each of these verses and give a quick explanation, kind of hit the main points of it and go from there. All right. So this is Matthew chapter five, verses 13 through 16 it says, you are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. Verse 16, in the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may 
see your good works and give glory to your father who is in heaven. All right. So like I said, I wanted to go through each of these verses. There's four verses here and they all have something really significant in them, just like any other verse in the Bible does. But verse 13 specifically, it it starts out by saying, you are the salt of the earth. Okay. Now until here recently, I'm going to admit this, that I didn't really know what this passage was really all about. And then I started listening to some sermons by, by, uh, John Piper and some, some other pastors. And then actually most recently pastor at the church I'm attending right now, he did a very thorough breakdown of what this passage means. It really opened my eyes to what the whole purpose of this teaching really comes down to. So again, verse 13, it starts out by saying that you are the salt of the earth. So this is Jesus talking to, to the crowd of people that are standing out here before him. And anybody who has tried salty food, you know, as soon as you try it, that the food is salty. So what the whole point of this, I think, is when, when Jesus is saying this is that, that it's noticeable. Okay, so if you are the salt of the earth, that then whenever you are in the earth, whenever you are out in the world, you're interacting with those around you, the, the saltiness, the impact that you're having is noticeable. Just like whenever you have food that has salt in it, you notice the impact that that salt has to the taste of the food. So again, it goes, you are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be stored? It is no longer good for anything else other than to be thrown out and let people walk all over it. All right. That's essentially what's going on here. So if we, so if just imagine this, say you're seasoning your, your meal, you're getting it prepped, you're cooking it. And the salt that you're using doesn't have that salty flavor. Would you hang on to it? Likely not, right? You're going to throw it out. If it is no longer salty, then it has no purpose anymore other than just be thrown out, thrown away, disposed of. Same thing with our quote unquote saltiness, okay, with our impact that we have, with the positivity impact that we have. If we're not out sharing our faith, sharing the gospel of Christ, if we're not out going out and having a positive impact on those around us, then what good are we? Might as well just throw throw ourselves out. Like there's there's no reason for it. And if we're not going to be having the impact that we need to be having for those people around us, then what, what good is it anymore? Okay, that's essentially what I think he's saying here is that we're the salt of the earth. We should have an impact. We should have, we should be noticeable. Our faith, our our group, a group of believers, we should be having a positive impact in the world and we should be seeing the, the fruit of that impact. It should be noticeable. Okay, I think that's what basically what is being said here in verse 13. So going on verse 14, it has a very similar theme. So in verse 14, it says, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Okay. That's verse 14. Same kind of thing. If you're in a dark room and then there is a light coming from, I don't know, anywhere, then you're going to be, your attention is going to be drawn to that light. Or if you're out in the woods and there's a light, maybe it's from the moon or maybe from a street light, or maybe somebody's got a flashlight and maybe you're <laughs> somebody's got a flashlight and they're out ahead of you and they don't know you're there. Your attention is drawn to that light, right? Or if you're driving down a dark road and you see a house up on a hill or a house anywhere and, and it's lit up, you can see the light shining through the window. Your attention is drawn to that light. Okay. Same kind of concept as what's going on in 13. The attention is drawn to that light in the darkness. So you should be having an impact Your positivity, your faith, your trust in Christ should be having an impact to those around you. Like they should see what's going on. Okay. Our world is filled with darkness and always has been. It was during Christ's time, 2000 years ago, and it definitely is today. I I don't think that, I think it's a fair assessment to say that darkness has always been, been in this world. Okay. And, but the good news is Christ tells us that he has conquer the world. Okay. So same kind of concept. What's going on in verse 13 is we, what we have going on here in verse 14 is that our light should be noticeable in the darkness. Okay. It should be, we should have an impact to those around us. They should see the light of Christ in us in the darkness of the world. All right. So 
Christ, he, he, he continues on in this explanation. It says, verse 15, Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. So 2,000 years ago, they obviously didn't have electricity. I don't think anybody, well, I guess there are probably a few people to this day who probably didn't have electricity, you know, growing up, or, or maybe they remember a time when they didn't have electricity. So, of course, 2,000 years ago, Jewish homes in Israel, they didn't have the electricity that we have now, okay? What they would have to do is they would have to light their lamps. They had oil lamps. They may have had wax lamp, wax candles or whatever it may be, but likely they had some kind of oil lamp that burned some kind of flammable material, animal fat, or some kind of oil or something that would burn inside the homes, inside the lamp, and then they would, of course, place that up on a stand where it would light up the entire house. Okay, now this was likely some kind of comical comment that that Jesus was making here because, of course, it would be foolish to to light up a, a lamp, an oil lamp, and then put it under a bowl. Like, what's the point of that? That's, that's really what he's getting at here is that you don't light up a lamp and then put a basket over top of it or a bowl over top of it. You let it shine so that it, it will light up the entire house. And just like that lamp has an impact in the entire house, it shines on all of those around them or all those are, that are in the house. It has an impact in that darkness. Okay. So referring back to verse 14, our light should have an impact to those around us. Okay. You take the lamp away, you take the light away, you end up with darkness. Okay. Total darkness. But as soon as you bring that lamp, that light back in, it has an impact and it is shining throughout all those that are there. So this is probably very, very comical for those, those that were listening to this at the time as Jesus was running through this Sermon on the Mount because it would be foolish for somebody to light up a lamp and put a bowl over top of it. Okay, it would it, still to this day, us, we flip on a switch and a lamp comes on. Okay, it would be silly for us to go and cover that thing up once we turn it on, right? Okay, because we want, we're turning the lamp on so that it has an impact, so that it takes away the darkness that is present. And then the final verse in this is verse, is verse 16. So this is an, an obviously an important point to what Christ is saying here. And this is what really wraps up this entire passage or this section of the passage in this teaching and this teaching on the Sermon on the Mount. So verse 16, in the same way, let your light shine before others. So again, let that light shine before others. There's a kid song, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. So I'm sure you guys are familiar with that song and I'm sure it came from this very verse right here. So in the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your father who is in heaven. All right. So I think it's very important to make sure that we emphasize the both parts of the sentence here. We need to let our light shine, let our light shine. Now, obviously this isn't a literal light. This is a metaphor for the, the positivity of what Christ has given us. Okay, through faith in him, but we let that metaphorical light shine so that others may see it. Okay, they can see our fruit. We, they can see the good works that are coming from our faith. All right, so it doesn't say to, it. the sentence doesn't end by saying so that they may see your good works. So it's very important that we don't miss that part because our works done by us alone are not good. Like we, we do not have the ability to be able to do good works apart from Christ. Okay. So it's very important that we, we are not doing these works so that we may seek our own glory. Okay. We're not doing these works so that we may get praise from other people. Okay. Cause at that point, that's, that's our reward for this. Okay. But moving on here, it says, and give glory to your father who is in heaven. All right. So we are going to let our light shine so that people may see the good things that are coming from our faith, see the good things that are coming from our positivity and our faith in Christ so that they will see those good works and then they will give glory to God, which is the one that who ultimately deserves the glory. It's not our own. Okay. This is not something that we are doing just so that we can make ourselves look good. So we can make ourselves look all Christiany quote unquote Christiany. All right. So this is something that we are doing so that we may have an impact on those around us. All right. So, so that brings us down to really our, our main 
the main point of this whole passage, verses 13 through 16, is that the whole point of this teaching, I believe, is that we should be influencing those around us in a positive way. It's very easy to get caught up into the the lies and the deception and the darkness that is surrounding our world here in America. It's, it seems like the closer we get to the election day, the, the worse things get and the more d- divisive things seem to seem to be. So I just want to challenge you guys to, especially right now, to really take a step back and to consider consider your actions, consider your thoughts as we're kind of moving forward in this election season. I feel like every four years, it, it, it's always very tense. It's always very difficult to be able to have conversations that don't revolve around politics. And I just want to challenge you guys, myself included, to really try to take a step back and, and look at what's actually important. Okay. Hopefully we're not spending more time and more energy and more effort campaigning for the the candidate that we want to win more than we are campaigning for Christ. Like don't love the American kingdom more than you love the kingdom of God. It can be very slippery slope. This is something I had to really challenge myself with was because with all the politics and with all the conversations that are surrounded around politics right now, it's very easy to fall into the the trap that we are trying to defend the American kingdom, quote unquote, more than we are the kingdom of God. Not that it needs to defend it or anything, but I just want to challenge you guys to make sure that you guys are keeping track of what is actually important in this time. Okay, so I think we should have a positive influence on those around us. We should have a an influence that is going to to have a positive impact on people's lives and nothing is more positive than than being able to share Jesus with them. And that's that's exactly what I want to do with this podcast. And that's exactly what I want to challenge you guys to do is to go out into the world and be the salt of the earth. Can make a difference in the climate around you. Okay, make a difference in your workplace. Make a difference, especially in your home. Like if you are not that's that should be number one as far as where you are living this life out. Okay. Be salty be quote unquote salty in your home have a positive impact in your home your wife should be the one that's noticing if you're married your your wife should be the one that is noticing first how the story of christ and how the love of christ and how he is having a positive impact in your life and you should be in turn having a positive impact in your marriage the way you treat your kids if you're not married and you're dating the way you're treating those around you I mean, there's definitely opportunities where we can have an impact. We can be salty and we can allow our light to shine regardless of where we are. School, work, church, home, anywhere we go, the grocery store, driving down the road. I mean, there's all kinds of places that we have an opportunity to be able to let our light shine and be able to have a positive impact for those around us. Our impact should be noticeable and it should be positive. So that's really what I wanted to challenge you guys with this time. Um, I know this was a a short monologue episode. I appreciate you guys continuing to show your loyalty. I'm working on scheduling some more interviews for the future. So I'm going to continue to work hard on that. And uh, thank you guys for joining me for another week of the Rise Kelly podcast. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Leave a rating or review if you're finding any value from this episode any value from this podcast. Thank you guys for your continued support.